thank you organizers for this conference i think this is the future and uh, this is amazing very egalitarian and open for all okay so let us start with the thought experiment so let us say we have three individuals with c diff and then we do a typical fecal transplant on them and after doing the fecal transplant we see that it was successful in two individuals but not in the third one so this is an open question as to why the fecal transplant was only successful in two but not the third and now let us say we track these individuals for some time and then we see that the first individual didn't have a relapse and was symptom free but the second individual had a relapse so this is yet another question that why fmt which was successful initial resulted in a relapse later and let us say in the third individual that had a uh, that had a unsuccessful fmt we repeated the fmt with the same stool with the same donor and the stool but this time it was successful so this is also now an open question that why fmt that was successful in uh, unsuccessful initially is now successful in the second term so the key to answering these questions lies in fulfilling the commensal cox postulates and what are they they are basically that can we identify the discrete bacterial strains from the donor that are isolated from culture from the cured recipient post fmt and not before so that is can we see the transmission of the donor strain in the recipient and we can also culture them so this can revolutionize and answer the uh, answer a lot of questions related, uh, related to these open questions in fmt however after tens of thousands of successful fmt we still don't know that which exact strains from the donor durably engraft in the recipient and whether strain engraftment or other metrics can even predict the outcome furthermore finding the strain transmission can also help us identify the set of microbes for uh, therapeutics as a set of defined microbes for the therapeutics in contrast to the whole stool fmt because recently even the fda thinks that uh, uh, with the whole stool fmt there is a risk for adverse events due to transmission of pathogenic organisms in the stool okay so strain transmission is important however it is challenging why because there are numerous bacterial species that haven't been cultured before and finding the delineating features of specific strains is difficult so there are lots of groups that have come up with metagenomics based strain resolution that is they find the mags and the snips and they track them however these approaches can never result in discrete bacterial strain for fulfillment of cox postulates and it is also not entirely clear whether they work on the benchmark data so and moreover we can also culture the strains from the donor and the recipient and then track them however it is not clear because uh, these approaches are low throughput because culturing takes time and also pretty expensive so let us even first ask the question whether the current metagenomics based strain resolution or tracking approaches they work on benchmark data so towards it what we did was we took the germ free mice and we gavaged it with either one strain of ovartes five strains of bacteroides ovartes or nine strains of ovartes so in this case we know the exact number of bacteroides ovartes present in the germ free mice which is now a notobiotic mice and we see that the current approaches for strain tracking the metagenomics approaches like con strains in strain strain finder they are not able to predict the current number of gavard strains in notobiotic mice similarly we can ask the question whether we can cluster the bacterial strain with the corresponding metagenomic sample for example we have the uh, donor and the recipient fmt pair we have cultured the strain from the donor and the recipient so we know it is present in both of them so can we uh, cluster the correct bacterial strain with the with the samples or we have isolated the strain from the individual across multiple time points so can we cluster the strain with the corresponding metagenomic samples and even here we see that all these approaches they have pretty poor uh, uh, um, sensitivity that is the recall yeah so in order to address this question we developed an approach for strain tracking which is an hybrid between uh, strain culturing and metagenomics so the idea is can we find the informative or unique kmers for a strain and track them across the metagenomic samples so the question here is can we identify the informative kmers initially so we use a lot of approaches we scrub the kmers that have been seen in other samples and are left with uh potentially in informative kmers and then we develop certain statistics and compare we compare the number of reads in the uh, for the strain in a sample with the negative controls 
and based upon this we find the statistics so in these two examples our approach does pretty well and then we further test it on a more complex data set where we have 260 bacterial genomes that we cultured as a gold standard from different donors from different healthy donors so now the algorithm doesn't know that which genome came from the which uh, stool sample so we try to use the metagenomics to connect the two and we find that we have a pretty good performance with high uh, auc high precision and recall and we do even well at almost half a million reads okay so now we have an algorithm that can detect and track strains so now we apply this on real fmt data so we have a very interesting case where we have one donor that is giving its samples to multiple recipients so we have more power to see whether the same strain consistently transmits and in grafts and recipients or we have the case where we have single donor recipient pairs and then we also take metagenomic samples from the recipients later we also culture them to check to check for a real world transmission and all we also do a repeat fmt in case the fmt was not successful and then we ask the questions related to strain transmission and tracking so the idea is very simple we have the strains we check them in each of the metagenomic samples to come up with strain dynamics and what we find is that fmt results in a very stable durable almost semi permanent alteration of the recipient's microbiome the donor strains almost 70% of the donor strains are stably engrafted in the recipient even 5 years later and then we can also ask questions about which strains of the recipient that were present prior to fmt persist towards up till 5 years and we find that there is a set of almost 20% of recipient strains or the others are lost that significantly persist and are not kicked out by the donor strains even 5 years later and then we can also look into strains that are not donor in origin or recipient in origin and ask them what is the profile of uh, the recipient post fmt uh, and the proportion of donor recipient in the environmental strains and we find that the majority of strains are from the donor but some from the recipient persist and there are some unique strains that are also there from the environment okay so now we ask the question that we know that uh, uh, we now understand the strain dynamics so does it explain the outcome so we looked at the 8 weeks time point that is when most of the clinicians try to see whether the fmt was successful or not and we found that patients that didn't have a relapse had a stable and a higher engraftment than patients who had a relapse so we were very curious that now if we give a repeat fmt in these patients then do we see a improvement in their engraftment and we found that their engraftment is significantly increased post fmt and then we now look at all the time points and then try to see whether if there was a successful fmt then whether the total engraftment of donor strains was more than 17% and that is the case and whenever it is less we always see a relapse there is one interesting case that we discuss in our paper and also in the preprint uh, on bio archive i don't have the time to discuss it now but uh, i can uh, uh, tell it later and then finally we can use our approach to rank order the species by their engraftment efficacy and by that i mean that we can see like across these fmt donor recipient pairs we have different strains that are cultured from different donors and then we can ask the questions are some species uh, uh, systematically engrafting more in recipient from so many across these samples and all and we can rank order them and this kind of list can be used by the community to prioritize species for live therapeutic purposes because they are more likely to uh, consistently engraft in recipients and with this i think that my time is up i want to thank my lab of course the organizers and our funders for uh, uh, for 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 all the money for doing all the research so thank you so much